Well, how's it going, friends? This is Nick Quint, host of the New Testament Theologist YouTube channel, and I've got an interesting and probably difficult video to send to you, or at least the audio form of it. Um, as many of you know, I am ordained in the American Baptist Churches USA, specifically the Southwest region, which includes South or Southern California, Hawaii, Las Vegas, and Arizona and uh, a couple churches around, but that's mostly it. And uh, we are considered a mainline denomination, and we are, as most or if not all mainline denominations and probably most evangelical denominations, are dealing with the question of LGBTQ people and inclusion and ordination and all of those sorts of things. And I wanted to read two articles from you from the Baptist News Global, uh, with as minimal commentary as I can, uh, at least until the end. Because I think, one, it's important to update everyone about what is going on in my denomination, and I suspect not limited to my denomination. And also to, to offer some thoughts on what I think needs to be done or where we're going. Uh, so I will try to keep the commentary to myself. The links to the videos are in the description of this video provided they don't change, of course, because that happens. But I wanted to, so the reason I'm doing this video, one is to update, two is to offer commentary, but I think three also is to, I don't know, I, I feel pulled to do so in ways that I normally don't, and so maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, I don't know. But more information in the world is not a bad thing, amen? So let me Without further ado, read this first article. This Both articles are written by Mike Wing, Wingfield, um, who is, and I'll scroll down below, give me a sec, I'm doing this on the fly. Uh, he is, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay, Mar Mar Mark Wingfield, I'm sorry, not Mike, I'm, I apologize. Mark Wingfield, although, wait, wait, hold on. Does it say Mike? No, both, both of them say Mark. Okay, so I misread that, I apologize. Mark Wingfield serves as executive director and publisher of Baptist News Global. He's the author of Honestly, Telling the Truth About the Bible and Ourselves, and Why Churches Need to Talk About Sexuality. I believe that is with Fortress Press. His brand new book is Troubling the Truth and Other Tales from the News. And so he is uh, a very high-ranking um, person within American Baptist Churches USA and all of that. So I figured this would be uh, helpful. Uh, this is not written by an, uh, a dispassionate person, but I'm also not dispassionate. And so I figured this will be helpful to let folks know what's going on and um, offer my thoughts, um, as as you'll see. So the first one is under the section of news from the Baptist News Global. And the title of the article is ABC USA, that is American Baptist Churches USA, sends cease and Des desist letter to AWAB. AWAB, for those who don't know, is the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists. Uh, they were founded in, I believe, 1993 as, uh, well, the article will say, so, but just so, you know, ABC USA and AWAB, those are kind of the two, um, uh, 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 those are the two organizations. And so I'll read the article and I'll, I'll leave as little commentary as I can for, for later. So this is what it says. The president of the American Baptist Churches USA has sent a cease and desist letter to the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists demanding AWAB remove the ABC USA logo from its website, as well as any, quote, partnership, end quote, language related to the denomination. Now, pause for a sec. Um, oh, actually, no, no pause on that. I'll just continue. BNG, that is, and I'm inserting this, Baptist News Global. BNG made repeated attempts to get comment from Gina Jacob Strain, uh, which actually that's Reverend Dr. Gina uh, Jack Jacob Strain, new general secretary of ABC USA, and those emails were never acknowledged. No response was given. And so, interjection. Um, already, I I don't know. I'm, I'm weird. I think if you're engaging as an American Baptist with American Baptists, you should be respectful and use the titles for others, even if you disagree or agree with them. But... So anyway, just already, I'm not particularly thrilled by the, the tenor of this, um, but that's that remains to be seen. Anyway, moving on, quote, and now I'm citing, the relationship of AWAB to the ABC USA has been a matter of contention since AWAB's founding 30 years ago. The LGBTQ inclusive group was founded by individual members and churches within ABC USA. More conservative pastors and leaders within the denomination have wanted to distan distance themselves from AWAB. That appears to be the driving force behind the cease and desist letter, which reportedly was instigated by a small group of ministers within ABC USA. Uh, interjection. Um, that's that's not a helpful um, 
summary from my understanding of the situation, that small group of ministers. But um, already I, I don't uh, appreciate kind of the, the disinformation or the the malinformation being said here, but I'll try and keep, uh, I apologize, I'll keep my commentary to myself. BNG was not able to obtain a copy of the letter, although its contents were summarized in AWAB's August newsletter by Bob Siddig, a chairman of the AWAB Board of Directors. Quote, if you had visited the partner area of our website last month, you would have seen, you would have also seen the logo and link for ABC USA. He wrote, that is Bob. Um, I don't know if he's Reverend or Reverend Doctor. That, yeah, I don't know, unfortunately. Let's just say Reverend, just for the sake of, of not getting that wrong. It is no longer, quote, no, it is no longer there because of a former letter we, letter we received from American Baptist Churches USA to cease and desist from using its logo and listing the, nomina the denomination as a partner. He continues. Quote, we have learned that this action on the part of ABC USA was prompted by a letter of concern that was sent to the Board of General Ministries. Our understanding is that the decision to send the cease and desist letter was made only by the executive committee of the general board without discussion with the whole board. Um, I can't speak to that, um, and I won't, so I won't. Anyway, moving on. Siddig, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. Siddig says uh, he found, finds this puzzling because of the Baptist principle of autonomy. Quote, I question how the decision of a local church to be welcoming and affirming to all of God's children should be challenged by regional or denominational decree, he wrote, he, end quote. An action such as that flies in the face of the principles of church liberty, soul liberty, and scriptural liberty, all of which create the foundation of which it means to be Baptist, end quote. The second puzzlement, he said, is that ABC USA has not formally addressed LGBTQ inclusion since 1992. Quote, the hypocrisy of incompatible Christian teaching... Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll say that again, the hypocrisy of, quote, incompatible with Christian teaching, end quote, because he's quoting someone or quoting, uh, he is quoting the, um, uh, he is quoting the, uh, it's, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact statement. Um, uh, I, I, it's a re, it's, I think it was the 1992 ABC USA resolution on sexuality, which said, I, I do remember what it said. It says, and I'm being, I'm paraphrasing, but I, I'm pretty certain it said, the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. So I believe that's what that said. And so that, that's what he's referring to. So I'll, I'll say it again for full context and clarity for him. Quote, the hypocrisy of incompatible with Christian teaching is overwhelming, he wrote. Not only are there LGBTQ members in most ABC USA churches, but several are also teaching Sunday school. There are church staff members, regional staff members in ABC USA staff, and national board members who are members of the LGBTQ community. End quote. Brian Henderson, an ABC USA minister who leads AWAB, did not respond to BNG's request for clarification. He confirmed receipt of the cease and desist letter. Henderson said, Henderson said he is, quote, appreciative, end quote, of subsequent conversation with both Jacob Strain and President Nikita McAllister. Quote, as AWAB understands it, the executive committee of the Board of General Ministers was responding to a letter of complaint written by executive ministers who have not been pleased with AWAB's presence in American Baptist life, he wrote, he, and he said, end quote. Um, so already, um, um, the author of the article, Wingfield, um, so when he said earlier, just to offer a little bit of clarification, a uh, small group of ministers is now said to be, and I, this is why I find this disingenuous and malinformation, to be frank, is that these are written by executive ministers. Executive ministers, for those who don't know, um, if you're looking for an analogy in a, in a higher church setting, they would basically be bishops of the region, although they have less kind of sovereign power than a bishop. They're basically the executive minister or director of our region. So uh, I don't think um, the author of the article is being precise, or clear, or fair with what he said earlier. As Henderson, uh, I think it's Reverend Dr. Henderson, I could be wrong. But Henderson, uh, Reverend Henderson said that. Executive ministers, he said, quote, the executive committee very judiciously reviewed its policies and procedures around the use of its logo so as to not single out AWAB alone. AWAB was told a number of organizations received the same request, end quote. So already, um, this is directed at AWAB, but it's not in entirely exclusive to AWAB. That is my brief summary. Continuing on. Although ABC's leadership, and this is the article, this is not a quote or anything, it, although ABC's leadership has been silent on the sequence of events, BNG has learned that the effort to distance the denomination from AWAB resulted in distan dis distance, I cannot talk, distancing from other partner organizations as well. Who those are have not been publicly stated. Henderson added, quote, AWAB hopes for the day when Baptists, recognizing our Baptist freedoms, can do more work in ministry together than any of us can do on our own, even while holding different theological convictions. 
because of religious trauma experienced by marginalized individuals, including LGBTQ persons, people, I'm sorry, LGBTQ people such as myself, whenever there is a hint of discrimination suggested by the actions of those with privilege, the hurt that is felt is deeply painful. The executive committee of the ABC USA Board of General Ministries made a decision based on policy that is to be respected and honored. I only hope those who made a complaint about AY will learn to respect and honor our Baptist freedoms. End quote. And the article ends with, This summer, the affirming network of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship merged with, merged with AWAB with a celebration event held during C CBF's Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, June's General Assembly. Although CBF has not taken a formal position on LGBTQ inclusion, both CBF and the Alliance of Baptists are listed on AWAB's, quote, affiliates, end quote, page where ABC USA used to be listed. So I'll offer some commentary right now. It is, it is always... Uh, unhelpful when the author of the article basically diminutizes uh, resistance or dissidence within a denomination or what you might say, um, uh, or mar we might say marginalizes to use the language of the article, and then basically is outed, and I'm being facetious with that, is outed by AWAB uh, itself by saying these are not just a small group of ministers, this, these are executive ministers. And it's not to say that every executive minister, and we'll see who they are, um, uh, in the next article, but it's not, it's, it's one of those things to say, not every single American Baptist church within a region is traditional or conservative on the question of sexual ethics or progressive. There are conservative churches in progressive regions, and there are progressive churches in conservative regions. And so it's not as if every single church, um, would agree with the executive director's decision on something, what he or she might do. However, the general tenor is it's not just some a few or small number of ministers that are objecting. It is uh, executive ministers or directors, we might say, of entire regions where the, the thrust of the region does fall in line with that minister. And so already, this is not a helpful way of framing, the, uh, framing this conversation. Um, and we'll get more into it with the second article. So that's already a little bit of commentary. Um, I also don't find... Um, it helpful for AWAB to be basically doing certain things and then still say respect and honor our Baptist freedoms. And specifically, um, and I'll, I'll save this, I'll maybe explain this a little more later, is um, this issue, or I hate to call it an issue, but this conversation, whatever we want to call this, on LGBTQ inclusion um, and ordination um, is going to have to be actually talked about seriously and we're going to have to actually figure out what we're going to do. Because saying the um, honor our Baptist freedoms is all well and good until we don't. Um, I've had personal experience where I was very happy in certain uh, areas and working with progressives and moderates. And, and, and they are not the same thing, of course. A, a moderate is not a progressive. And very quickly, um, there was a sense of I'm, you know, my conservative views on this question. Uh, I was treated, I was called a racist multiple times. I was called all sorts of things, and I was also treated very, um, I would actually argue my views were marginalized, including sometimes even from the pulpit um, or from places in power. And so I already don't find this to be a helpful way of arguing, specifically since LG LGBTQ inclusion is the mainstay, I would argue, in culture. And so it's, we can always talk about marginalized individuals, but who truly holds the positions of power? That's a question that we need to wrestle with more. If you go out in society, you look at media, you look at most universities, you know, all these sorts of things, it's more likely than not um, conservative or evangelical or moderate Christians on this question of, of LGBTQ questions um, are not, um, you put it this way, you won't find a conservative person like myself uh, at, at most of our American Baptist seminaries. And I think I'm fairly moderate uh, within evangelicalism. For example, I do affirm our distinctive as an American Baptist, the ordination of women. I don't consider that to be moderate or liberal. I think it's, I hold to it for very conservative reasons because I think it's what the Bible teaches. But there is something to be said about how who's in charge and who's marginalized. And that is very, um, I would argue, often too subjective to be a helpful um, paradigm. So that's Article 1, and so that was on August 25th of this year, 2024, and that's by Mark Wingfield. Wingfield. And uh, you can read, and I read, I'll read, I'm reading the whole article, um, 
but I'll offer commentary after this one. So this article is called, uh, and this is under the analysis section, so this isn't news per se, although it does contain news, of course. Um, it is much more about um, its commentary, which I find helpful. So Mark Wingfield, this is October 8th, 2024, same website, Baptist News Global. And the article is called, When White Male Pastors Challenge Black Female Leaders. And so the article begins as this. Supporters of the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Back Baptists expressed surprise and shock when leaders of the American Baptist churches in the USA recently sent a cease and desist letter asking to be removed as a partner on AWAB's website. The original news story explains the context of that event, but it's the story behind the story that's more important. For obvious reasons, nobody really wants to talk on the record about all this, so I'm going to attempt to explain it based on conversations with several folks who have first-hand knowledge of what's going on. So already, um, I I find this sort of argument, this sort of assessment, to be just generally unhelpful. Um, there's no way to confirm. I'm not saying any author, you know, pro, con, left, right, isn't trustworthy. But I also, if I can't go look at the thing, I'm less likely to take it. I'm I'm, I'm more likely to take it with a much bigger heaping of salt, if that makes sense. But let's continue. I'll, and again, I'm sorry for the interjection of commentary. I'll try to save that for later. Per, and quote, so continue on. Perhaps the easiest part to explain is that the ABC is that the ABC USA has operated with a loose definition of what it meant to be a partner within the denomination. That created an opening for an attack on AWAB, although not a new opportunity. And that's part of what matters here. AWAB was formed three decades ago by American Baptists, not by the denomination itself. Insertion. That's key my own comment that is key there but i'll start over not by the denomination itself but by individuals and churches affiliated with abc usa all the other baptists were late to the game on this you can see how aweb might feel it's a partner with american baptists even if the denomination doesn't feel the same way already that's an interesting concession to interject again the bottom line and uh, to keep going the bottom line is aweb did not suddenly claim partner status with abc usa and made that claim for years However, two other recent changes appear to factor into the new concern from a small group of all-white male ministers, that is, executive ministers. So already, uh, we're not being particularly precise with our words here. So continuing on. The first is that this summer, AWAB merged with the affirming network of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. That was significant because CBF, which ha has its own divided mind on LGBTQ inclusion, finally was willing to be publicly identified with AWAB. The second is that ABC USA's two top leaders are now black women. Gina Jacob Strain, that is, I believe that's actually still Reverend Dr. Gina Jacob Strain, is the newly elected, sorry, that was my inclusion, so I'll read it again uh, as he wrote it. Gina Jacob Strain is the newly elected General Secretary of the denomination, and Nikita McAllister, again, I don't know if she's Reverend Doctor or Reverend, and Nik Nikita McAllister is the newly elected president. AWAB supporters believe it is not coincidental that a renewed attack on LGBTQ inclusion was launched when two black women came to leadership and not earlier, even though the facts of the case were mainly the same. They see this as a not-so-subtle form of racism and gender bias. White men typically think they can exercise authority over black women. With both women fresh, on their, fresh in their offices, they received a two-page letter from a group of ten white male ministers, executive ministers, I believe it's actually executive ministers, uh, according to AWAB's um, own count on this. Uh, Aaron Kilburn, Kil or Kilburn of ABC Dakotas, Al Fletcher of ABC Maine, Andy Quint of ABC LA Southwest Hawaii, and that would be my father-in-law, Brian Johnson of ABC Michigan, Charles Revis or Revis uh, of ABC Northwest, Mark Click of ABC Ohio, Mark Thompson of ABC Indiana Kentucky. Mark Sisson of West Virginia Baptist Convention, Ron, I'm going to butcher your last name, Ron, I'm sorry, Ron Boyhillet, uh, pardon me again, of ABC Vermont, New Hampshire, and Steve Bills of ABC Central Pacific Coast. Within the last three weeks, copies of that undated letter have been circulating on social media and via email distribution. This is the letter that reportedly set off an evaluation of all entities that claim to be, quote, partners with ABC USA. But the letter is explicitly aimed at AWAB. It states with underline it states with underlined letters, quote, the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Oh, interjection. Nailed that one. Okay, I was right. My memory was good on that. And continuing on. That's a quote from a 1992 ABC USA resolution 
on sexuality these ministers want to enforce in the denomination today. For whatever reason, the denomination has not made any official any other apologies has not made any other official policy statement on sexuality since 1992, 32 years ago. Now I'm going to interject here in case I forget. Um, for whatever reason, it could just be, and I'm going to be sassy right now. It could just be that uh, the conservatives in the denomination basically said what was good 2,000 years ago when Jesus and Paul and others said it certainly suffices for when this was written in 1992, which would be, according to this, 32 years ago. And so um, the author continues, consider how much has changed in the last 32 years in American life and in our understanding of sexuality and biblical scholarship and court rulings and the real life experiences of same-sex couples and in the reality of a whole lot of American Baptists. Um, just to point out, biblical scholarship, for the most part, has not changed a whole lot, at least within the academic, serious academic realm. The issue, in my eyes, is about hermeneutics, not what the text says. And I think most progressives who are honest with the text will admit that. And most of them, in my conversations with them, have admitted that. They've conceded that, which I think is a better conversation point. So um, I would argue not a whole lot has changed in the last 32 years. Court rulings, sure. Biblical scholarship, no. And in real world experiences, um, not to be rude, I think same-sex couples existed when Jesus and Paul um, said the things they said in scripture and when Moses said his his piece in scripture. So I don't find the wrong side of history implicit argument here to be fruitful or helpful. Um, but that is, of course, the author's right to make that claim. So I'll continue on. Quote, uh, to continue on reading, quote, it is not hard to understand why ABC USA might not have wanted to take up the contentious issue of LGBTQ inclusion more recently. Southern Baptists have cornered the market on the other side, passing resolution after resolution, damning gay people and denouncing same-sex marriage. Uh, perhaps the ABC folks thought they could just let the parade pass by. Two things on this. I'm going to just, I may just have to interject as I go along. So this is my interjection. Um, I don't think that's fair to the Southern Baptist. And as someone who's not Southern Baptist, but knows many Southern Baptists, I think we need to be more appropriate with how we talk about things. Um, Unless, of course, your goal is to salt the earth and burn it all down, which case, salt away. But um, I do think there is some truth in this last sentence, quote, perhaps the ABC folks thought they could just let the parade pass by. I think in many sense, I think that's actually fair. I know many moderate to conservative uh, American Baptists who this is not really an issue. This is not something they've thought about. And I think that actually is a, a telling statement. Um, and I think it why the, one of the reasons why I'm making this video right now is that I think we can no longer let the parade pass us by. Um, which again, for whatever reason, as the author said, uh, maybe people are realizing that the parade is coming and we need to be more faithful and biblical to what our denomination says and what scripture says and what Christian history and tradition has said. So maybe that's why the denomination has not felt the need to make any other official policy statement because, well, we affirm what was written and said thousands of years ago by Jesus, Moses, and Paul and others. But that's my end of my commentary for now. I'll keep I'll keep reading. Quote, if you were to ask most Southern Baptists what they knew of American Baptists, you'd likely hear them described as as more, quote, liberal and quote, Baptists. But that label isn't universally true. American Baptists are a much more diverse group than the rest of us understand, defined often by region, church size and history. And I would argue racially as well. We are more racially diverse than the Southern Baptists and politically diverse. But that's my interjection. And that's the fracture, continuing on, now on display in the debate over whether AWAP should be a partner with the denomination. Quote, it is harmful and confusing for ABC USA to appear to support or partner with an organization whose stated purpose for existing is to advocate directly against an American Baptist resolution, the letter declares. It adds, quote, several of our regions have already lost congregations and are facing the imminent loss of more congregations and of entire associations due to the perception that ABC USA is in partnership with AWAB in opposition to both the clear teaching of scripture and to the American Baptist Resolution on Homosexuality, end quote. And he says, quote, the first question these male ministers ought to answer is why they're just now raising these concerns. What changed to make them act now? The only thing that appears to have changed is the skin color and gender of the leaders in charge. Now, I'm going to say something a bit spicy, and I apologize if it's rude, but I feel what was said is incredibly rude, implying that we are racists and misogynists when um, I know I'm not, and I know uh, many people that are conservative on this question are not. Um, where there are actual racists and misogynists, I condemn them. I have no problem doing so. But the problem with what the author says here Aside from being falsehood, and I would argue um, a lie, 
and, and I mean that sincerely, this is an actual lie, he admits earlier, ironically, I think, that the two recent, going back up, two recent charges appear to factor into the new concern. I don't think it's a new concern, but I would say the more present concern from a small group of all-white male executive ministers. The first is that this summer, AOAB merged with an affirming network of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. That was significant because CBF, which has its own divided mind on LGBTQ inclusion, finally was willing to be publicly identified with AWAB. So, what made what changed to make them act now? Well, multiple things. You can look, and if we want to take culture into this, um, it's very clear. Culture has not moved at a glacial pace, but has moved incredibly quickly. And we are now seeing all sorts of things going on, particularly in other denominations. We can think of the United Methodist Church. We can think of all sorts of churches and denominations where this question is now being um, ever present in conversation and in polity and in theology. So um, not only that, you also have other denominations very quickly as Baptist changing. You also have the pressure, I would argue, the fair pressure to take a stand against the encroachment of progressive authoritarianism and progressive subversion of what I would argue are fairly plain biblical teachings. So rather than engage in that way, Mark decides to call us racists and uh, misogynists. And so I find this to be part and parcel of what happens when we just want moderates and we want Baptist autonomy and we want you know all these sorts of things, when in reality... I take my progressive friends and brothers and sisters and colleagues who act in good faith at face value when they say these things to me. At the end of the day, being called a racist or a misogynist means very little to me. But it does mean that that is the route we are now going. And I think this is a, a warning and a clarion call for those of us who are f trying to be faithful to scripture and to the church and to our actual, our, our actual brothers and sisters in Christ who are LGBTQ, whether they are living faithfully to scriptural teaching or are not, and we are to be their family members and so on and so forth. But I think that for this, for Mark to say, the only thing that appears to have changed is the skin color and gender of the leaders in charge. Given that we have several and many ordained African American and Latino ministers in our region, and our region is generally conservative, is I think, uh, a, frankly, a colonialist and patronizing and frankly fairly racist slap against all of the um, uh, african-american and latino and latina ministers in our in our churches that are that hold the biblical line on sexual ethics and so at the end of the day progress white progressivism is very happy to um, go the route of what the united methodists did and so i think we need to be more honest we need to be fair, and we need to be more gracious in how we engage with this. And I think, frankly, this sort of argumentation, this sort of attitude is, is, is frankly going to need to be um, addressed. And he continues on, but that is my commentary. Um, I object to being defined, and I know others do as well, of being a racist and being a misogynist. Um, I, I think it is not only a lie, I think it is um, sinful, and I think it is frankly beneath other ministers of the gospel who otherwise in the previous article wanted to talk about Baptist autonomy. But suddenly what's good for me is not good for you. And so I think conservatives and moderates and people on the fence and so on and so forth, um, we, need to, we need to reflect on this going forward because the biennial for 2025, um, it's not going to get any easier. And so it'll take us, our, those of us with soft hearts and steel spines, uh, the men and women of our region and other regions to stand up and say, this is what scripture teaches, and we'll not be colonized into changing what scripture teaches. And so I'll end with um, the two uh, small paragraphs written by the author, Mark Wingfield. He says, and the question everyone in the ABC ought to answer is whether they want to keep living under a 33-year-old, wait, it was 30, 33 or 32? I can't remember. Anyway, that, he says 33. Under a 33-year-old resolution on sexuality that is outdated and reads like it could have been written by the SBC. My first thought is, well, um, we don't particularly care about what was written 33 years ago. We care about what was written thousands of years ago by Moses, Jesus, and Paul, and Peter. So um, I don't find this to be helpful, and I find this to be, frankly, just un 
I find this to be detached from the actual issues. And so the resolution stands because scripture stands is my humble opinion on that. And the final sentence, meanwhile, AWAB is unhindered in its work. It is expanding, adding members, growing income, and gaining influence across denominational lines. It doesn't need the ABC's USA's official partnership to survive. That's an idea that would have been popular in, say, 1992. And all I'll say is this. You're right. It doesn't need the ABC USA's official partnership to survive. And that's more of an indictment on the ABC USA as well as General Baptist cowardice. So... That is article number two. Uh, I apologize for in interjecting throughout this. Um, I realize that um, I've said some strong things and I stand by them. I don't believe that um, this is going to get any easier. Um, having been called a racist and a misogynist by people that frankly didn't know me, didn't know me enough, um, I, I think we need to conservative and evangelical minded people uh, American Baptist ministers and and and, and pastors, um, brothers and sisters, this is what's coming down the line, and there is going to be um, backlash. There's going to be all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, um, if I'm being called a racist and a misogynist for believing in what Peter and Paul and Jesus said, then I can live with that. There are certain things I can't live with. But the people that know us, that know you, that know me, know we're not those things. And so the slander and the lies from others shouldn't mean much. What matters is that the word of God stands and will continue to stand. And we need to be faithful, gracious, and strong in how we engage. So uh, those are the two articles that I think represent where the debate and the issues and the conflict will be. I think it will only get worse from this point forward. Um... I used to believe, and I mean this sincerely, that we could agree to disagree on various contests um, and issues. I, I don't now believe that that is possible. And how that gets adjudicated is beyond my pay grade and beyond the time limits I've set for myself at this current moment. But rest assured, being faithful to King Jesus will require lots from us. And at the end of the day... Um, Maybe this is a chance to show the world and others that allegiance to King Jesus is what me, is what fully matters at the end of the day. And so, um, God bless you. Um, may the Lord be with us, and may the Lord protect the faithful and give us wisdom and grace and strength and tenderness going forward. God be with us, and God be with you. God bless everyone.